Welcome back, guys. Hi, guys. Good to see you again. Um, we're going to be doing some math with sig figs today. Ooh, I bet there are some rules with this, Mr. Uh, King. There's only two sets of rules, so it's not too bad. All right. All right. Uh, it turns out the calculators do not do sig figs. Uh, when you ask your calculator to take 22 centimeters and divide by 7 mils, uh, it gives you an answer of 3.14285714 centimeters Ooh. per milliliter. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, bit, too much that's, information. That's a little precise for 22 yeah. divided by 7. Check this out. The precision here on this ruler was the guess digit was in the ones place. Yeah. The guess digit here was in the ones place on this measurement. So where where do we think? Yeah. Yeah, you know, having precision all the way down to the tens, hundreds, thousands, well, ten thousands, hundred thousands. Is. Millions, hundred, uh, ten millions, hundred million uh, to the billions place value. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think we have that much precision. Do you? Yeah, that's a little. Yeah, that's a little crazy with that's those little two tools so, that you measured with. So there are some rules for telling us whether we ha how far to go before we round. Okay. All right, and that's that's a common question in chemistry, isn't it? Yeah. Where do you want me to round? Sig fig rules. Yeah. Yeah, just use the sig fig rules because statistically they're good most of the time. Okay. Multiplication and division for significant figures. You count the number of significant figures in each value of your problem, do the operation, round the answer to have the same number of sig figs as the number with the smallest number of sig figs in the problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's number of. Multiplication and division is number of sig figs, yeah? Yeah, okay. okay. So if we were going to do a problem such as 20.4 grams times 17.32 grams, don't usually multiply masses. No, but it's just an, it, just, just, just an example. Just for an example, and this, this is actually good because it will help us follow units even though the yeah. units aren't making sense yeah. at the end. Okay. Uh, you said the first step was to count sig figs. It appears that the number 20.4 has those two and the one in between the sandwich, so we have three, got sig, three figs. sig figs there. And this one has four, four sig figs. So what we're going to do here is we're going to hit equals on our calculator. The calculator says 353.328, and according to the units, it should be grams times grams, which is grams it's squared. squared. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how, where did I want to round? Well, I've got three sig figs here and four there. You said the least number of sig figs, which is three. Uh -huh. So I'm going to pick out the first three. One, two, three. And I am going to go ahead and use this three to decide how to round that three. Uh -huh. In the math class I grew up in, they taught me that four or less, you round, you leave it alone. Okay. Five yeah. or above, you round yeah. up. Right. This is not, we're not doing any new math skills here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give an answer of 353 grams squared. So the answer cannot be, or no, the answer cannot have more significant figures than the number in the vault problem. Than the least, yeah, than the than the number with the least okay, number of six figs. Crazy to have six sig figs in your answer when your least significant is three. Is three, right. Okay. Exactly. So Got it. we always do this to the smallest number of sig figs. All right, so it's a counting issue. Counting yep. how many, yeah? Right, counting. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, isn't this the same rule? Addition and subtraction. Just another. It, it, you know what? It's a little bit different because oh. it, you know they, they taught us addition and subtraction was one kind of math, and then later on they taught us multiplication and division was another kind of math. It's it's a little bit speedier, so, so there's a little right. bit weirdness to different it. Different rule. Okay. Okay. Um, basically, the rules here are: you find your significant place value in each number. You find your last significant place value in each number. Okay. You do the mathematical operations, and then you round to the place of least significance from step one. Okay, so addition subtraction is place value. Place value, not number. Okay. So you're worried not about how your place many, value. It's place value. Right. Got and it. This should be clear through an example. Uh, let's try this out. If we actually do the math here, 20.4. I like to do this the way they taught way back when in grammar school. Yeah, the old-fashioned way. The old-fashioned way without a calculator. 
So I add the 9, the 6, the 2, the 7. Actually, I'm not following rules. I'm not following the order properly. So the first step is to figure out the last place value. I've got a f the 4, the tenths place. Okay. And then the 9, which is in the tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten the ten thousandths. So that second number is a way more precise than the first number, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, this is more precise than that. So when I'm all done, I can't use this much precision. I have to use this much okay, precision. Okay, so my answer should end in the tenths place. Right, to indicate okay. that my worst precision was tenths place all value. Right. All right, so I add the 9, the 6, the 2. Uh, that would be 7.73. So I got 37.7269. But the place value I want is the tenths place value, the least precise place value. Well, doesn't it all round up because of that 9 at the end there, Mr. Kane? Oh, you want me to round how many times now? Let's see. It would I'm just kind of roll over, I, wouldn't it? I'm not doing any more work than I have to. You want me to round once? Twice, three times? Uh, no, no, no. no <laughs> I'm sorry. Not. I'm not doing that much work. Just by the immediate neighbor. Got Once, it. Once. All right. So that X and X. We're getting rid of those. So I'm even going to do this. Yep. All right. So 37. Point, the two tells me to leave. The two tells me to leave it alone. Okay. So 37.7. Okay. okay. And it should have a unit. But yeah. Just and if, for if these had units, then this would be a perfect we're just example. Doing ex okay. Examples. Hey, let's let's put uh, let's put grams. Grams, yeah, yeah. so grams, right? Yep. Grams, grams. That means All my answer should be in grams. All measurements will have units. Okay. And notice this, guys. When you add, the units don't multiply, so it's just grams, right? If I had multiplied right. grams times grams, I get uh, grams times grams, which is grams squared. Has to be the same units to add. Yeah. Okay. Calvin. Uh, Calvin. Is this Lord Calvin here? Sure looks like Lord Kelvin. That is Lord Kelvin. Uh, he was known as an absolute zero. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, I think that's what I'm known as, too. Uh, actually, uh, the, we've talked about the Kelvin temperature scale in class before. Yeah. So uh, this is just a picture of Lord Kelvin, and uh, you might be able to guess where Lord Kelvin was born. Yes, another I, Brit. I think he was a Brit. I'm not positive on that. Are you are you positive I'm on that? Positive. Oh, yeah. you're po all right. Hey, isn't he the guy who experimented with gases? Yeah, he experiments with gases, and he found out that uh, he found out that there's an absolute temperature, absolute lowest temperature that you can get to. Oh, okay. And kinetic energy, which is the energy of motion. Right, which we've talked about. Okay, we've yeah. talked about that, and the lower the temperature, the less motion. So the lower the kinetic energy. All exactly. Right. All right. So basically, what we need here is we need you to write this down in a place in your no in your notebook that's accessible because it's a conversion factor you're going to use all the time. Either write it on the back of your periodic table or the front cover of your notebook. And chemistry doesn't use Fahrenheit, so we're always yeah. Celsius people, always, aren't we, Mr. It's always going to be this. Our thermometers measure in Celsius, and when we want to convert to Kelvin, we add 273.15, and we're done. Okay. It's a real easy conversion. Sounds good.